This tutorial covers the basics of how to read a call number. Let's start with this. You may have noticed something like it on one of the library's books already. Or you may have seen something like this when you were looking for books in the library catalog. This string of letters and numbers is a call number, but it's completely different from the sort of call numbers that you may be familiar with from the public library. CAPU Library, like most post-secondary libraries in North America, uses a call number system created by the U.S. Library of Congress to group books on similar topics together. So, how do you take this information and use it to go find the book? Well, think of it as an address to guide you to the shelf where the book will be found. This particular call number has five meaningful chunks of information. First start by looking at the letter or letters at the very beginning. These represent broad subject areas. For example, P is for books on the overall topic of language and literature. Library of Congress or LC call numbers often include a second letter if the book is on a narrower topic. For example, PS is where you'll find books on American and Canadian literature. Since you know that P is for a very broad subject area, it's not surprising that call numbers starting with P come first on the library shelves. At the end of the P's, you'll find all the books starting with PA, then PB, and so on down to PS. The next chunk of information is this number here. It's a whole number, literally 8,476. So you'd find it between books with the call numbers PS 8475 and 8477. The next piece is really different. Dot O58 is a letter and decimal combination. Slow down at this part. It can be confusing to switch from looking for whole numbers to looking for decimals. Because it is a decimal, you'd find it, for example, between dot O524 and dot O6. The next piece switches back to being a letter and a whole number. But it's important to know that not all call numbers include this piece. So don't worry if your call number is shorter than this one. The final number is the year the book was published. This is mostly important if there are multiple editions of the book and you need to read a particular one. So to recap, single letters come before double letters. The first number is a whole number. The third chunk is a letter and a decimal and increases by decimal place. The fourth part isn't always included, so don't worry if yours doesn't have it. And finally, the last piece is the publication year. When you head upstairs, look out for these handy signs that can really help point you in the right direction. We have signs in the middle of shelves that tell you what subject area you're currently browsing, and signs on the end of the racks telling you which direction to go for which letter ranges. Do you think you have this figured out? Hit pause and see if you can work out which of these is in the correct order. If you hit option B, you're absolutely right. If you're still confused, don't worry. We're here to help. In this tutorial, we've explored how to read a column number and how to use it to find a book in the library. If you need help locating a book, or with any other library research questions, you can come to the library for in-person help at the reference desk. You'll find our hours by clicking Ask a Librarian in the Help menu on the library homepage. If you can't make it in, call us, email us, or start typing away in the Ask Away chat box. Our contact information and Ask Away chat widget are also available by clicking the Ask a Librarian link in the Help menu.